How we doing, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of FSI's NASCAR Season Car Preview Show. Uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the differences between the next gen car and Generation Six. So, without further ado, Mega, take it away and talk to us about what the differences are. Well, I did a lot of research on this because I'm not a gearhead. The TK, I don't know how much you know about cars. I, I know very little um, other than how to drive it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of things I had to Google and research, but I thought it was like kind of practical just to see what the difference is with these cars. So um, yeah. we'll start with the first thing. Why did they do this? They wanted to make it cheaper. They wanted to level the playing field. They wanted to make it safer. They wanted to bring in new uh, manufacturers, hopefully maybe get Dodge back, maybe get um, yeah. Yeah, some other uh, different ones in. They want to bring in new teams and owners like Dale Herner Jr. potentially might you know want to move up here. And the yeah. drivers asked for it. They wanted a more challenging car to drive. So, right. and the, the unique thing about this is they made it really cost effective. It's going to be an investment up front. But then later on, it's going to be really cheap because you can only use kits of components from 26 um, approved single sources. So the best and the worst team have identical stock parts. Right. Now, that's as much as I know about the difference between the two is that, um, you know, each of them have to go from the same pool of parts. Uh, that is their idea to just level the playing field. I mean, we saw it with you know, Ricky Stenhouse having, you know, top average speed of like eighth last week at the auto club, um, you know, Reddick leading half the race. I mean, we're starting to see smaller yes, teams. Suarez up there, Eric Jones. Yeah. So yeah. it's happening. And, uh, yeah. And Ricky again, qualified inside the top 10 today, making single lap speed uh, as good as the rest. Right. So that's, that's, I know what the goal is, is to have parity amongst the field. And um, yeah. What, what do we got here on, transmission so the transmission is different um in the old generation car it used to be the h um shift they have clutches in them but they usually used to use a clutch to get into first gear once they're in first gear they kind of know the feel of the engine and they're able just to kind of hit the shifter and jam it in and sync so the gears are a little bit different i don't know a ton about this but they still have the same like v8 motors in them but with the new transition transmission, it's um it's kind of like a sequential one. And that's kind uh -huh. of what I have in, in my Jeep. And my Jeep's an automatic, but I still shift it myself because I don't like the car making decisions. I grew up driving a standard with the H pattern. Oh, nice. Basically, with the sequential is up on top is first, and then you hit it um towards you and it goes second, hit it towards you third. So if you're hitting it up, you're going down shifting. If you're hitting it um towards you then it's up shifting so it's um supposedly easier for them to to do that the other neat thing about this transition of transmission is if you look at the middle is they moved it to um the back of the car so it okay. kind of balances the car a little bit um better um than just having all the weight in the front with the transmission and everything they also found combining the transmission the rear differential into a single unit saved weight overall which creates a space up in um the front i don't know if you can see my arrow moving on the screen or not but i can't yeah we can okay so in this space here what they're looking for so that the transmission units back here now in this space they're hoping to put like a hybrid battery in it um in the future uh -huh. if they all have to go electric Oh, so okay so that's something that they found interesting out. anecdote there it's it's a lot to go a lot going on that's for sure now yep. i what's going on with uh, I'll let, you know what I, i'm sure we'll talk about it but i have a question about you know okay. an, a, a different part i'll let you see if it if it pops okay. up go ahead continue so on. suspension is a big one here it's more of an independent suspension back in the day you would hear and you heard it um, with the xfinity race with um, the track bar like rubbing on and like tires and and stuff you'd yeah. hear tighter loose they'd they put the little crank in and they turn it now it has indis um suspension these cars used to be based on a 1964 chevrolet truck they had two 51 <laughs> inch long trailing arms and two i-beams that came together in a bolt in the rear housing and they were bolted to the chassis um on the left side and the right side and that made up the rear suspension and this front suspension was a double wishbone one uh, All right. so <clears throat> that's so they changed it to this like independent one now to get like more of a racing feel and most of this is modeled after the gt3 um, cars 
they went with a coil over suspension design. Those are like put in cars and trucks for basically with lift kits, you can mm. raise the car and lower the car. And it gives you, um, they designed them after I think the Corvette was the first one to have these. It makes it flexible to um, be able to adjust it. So um, your setup, you can adjust better to the, like the track, um, the fuel for the track with a coil over suspension. If you want to lower right. your car, um, make it more sporty, raise it, um, different things, it'll change like the downforce and the handling on it. And it's a lot easier to do. One of the down um, things of this is there was one guy that broke um, one of his suspension things. And because it was an independent thing, it was harder for them to like fix it. And I think he was like out of the race uh, sooner than sure. if it was the old system and they could have like um, doctored it up a little bit better. Sure. Sure. Oh, well, very intricate parts of this car. That is for sure. Um, do, now, do they still have the track bar in, in car adjustment track bar or is no, that completely? Nope, not at all. Out? As you can see here, there's no track bar. It's an independent um, suspension for uh, the wheels in the back. So it has. So, that, so the driver can't adjust his, his, uh, his uh, suspension at all? I don't believe so. Okay. So it's all on the crew chief. That's for sure. Yep. All right. Move on to the next slide. Let's see what we got. The tires. Oh, big, oh, yeah, that's what I want to talk here. about. <laughs> they went from a 15 inch five lug nut steel to an right. 18 inch single lug nut, similar to for, Formula One. Um, right. It was built for road courses. They want this car built for road courses to adapt to oval, not built for oval to adapt to road courses or having to have two cars like they did years ago, where you had to have a road course car and a stock car. They give you better drip grip, the better drive off the corner. There's no yeah. inner liner at this point. They're talking about potentially putting in one because they did have issues with these tires going down. Um, they're wider and shorter sidewalls. And these new tires cause spin outs because the guys are complaining they cannot feel when they're getting loose and they just crash out of nowhere. Yep. That was going to be my question is, does an altercation to like the tire with like an inner wall, does that give them any kind of help like when they're coming out of it in a corner where they're just because like when these guys get when yeah when these guys get free and the back end goes there's no stopping it like i mean we've seen some saves but man like it just doesn't seem like the save percentage for for cars and and look at the visual difference here like how how that's what i mean that is compared to that one so i mean it looks it literally looks like they're racing road tires and, and it does, see, they don't even look like racing tires. Right. And you can see too, with like the suspension, look at how like the tire was completely out of the housing here, but now it like kind of is up in it. Sure, so, sure. I mean, the, these are like almost like really low, low riders, almost like a Lamborghini, which are illegal in most United States states because they're too low to go over the railroad tracks. Right. And I think that's just for what more downforce. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the body shell, they are now symmetrical. They used to be asymmetrical because it was all left turns. And they, so they offset the car for that. But now they, they've, so, yeah, centered it more. Yeah. They're styled more like floor model cars. And that's the whole thing was when you went to NASCAR race, you'd see this car and it almost looked identical to what you could go to like the showroom on Monday and buy. They want to try to get back to that. The, they want the stock car back. That's right. that's what their goal is. The car is the car is shorter. There's um one and a half um in shorter um like top, and then the deck lid is probably or the trunk part is probably where you can notice like um six inches shorter. Sure. Um, the width of the car is one point six wider, and the wheelbase is the same at at one ten. Uh, the numbers are not centered and that's at first I hated it. It's starting to, it's starting to grow on me now. Yeah. Um, but I, I would, I, I think that's a whatever complaint. I mean, it, am, I, am, am I watching it to, to see the letter, you know, like it's just, a, it's just a mind thing right. overall. It, eventually it's not even going to be noticeable. But here's the thing. If they do throwback cars, are they going to put the number in the center? 
like when they do like yeah, dunks, I can see that that, that, I can that see could be that. interesting so these composite bodies are a lot tougher they were adopted in the xfinity series in 2017 um they're no longer sheet metal the cars are less aerodynamic for um larger tracks to make them have more grip on the tires and they use yeah. air ducts to dispose of the air dirty air and traffic it might make passing more difficult but they wanted to try to keep them closer together to make them like easier uh, to make them more challenging to drive, but to make the right. racing better. Uh, for the first time, the front splitter is now a two-step splitter, which allows airflow over top of it into the engine compartment. But it's harder to get debris out. If you watched the race last week, the Gibbs team yeah. kept on getting stuff stuck in them. Um, and so they, they had some kind of screen in those. So they're working on changing that out to make it so compliant with NASCAR, what they want, but not make it like trapped like dust and stuff in the cars all over heat <laughs> another uh, thing is the splitter is no longer flat in front um they used to be uh, flat and now it's like with like a straight ledge technology but now it's um it's curved a little bit more so right staying with the body um the underside of it as um harrison burton has showed us many times um <laughs> he, he has wrecked uh, both races um and had some wild rides but as you can see it is sealed on the bottom now uh, yeah. the old ones were not and with the way they're set up they get stuck easy they're at the bottom feature a full length uh flat floor with a rear diffuser the previous cars had now, the bottom this diffuser if you get stuck in the grass, you can't get out of it with right. this thing. You're you're planted with that diffuser. So anytime you see your car in the grass, just pray he has enough momentum to get out because there's a good chance that that diffuser is going to lodge him in. And another thing is like we've seen it in Daytona, I believe someone, you know, messed up that diffuser and they had no ability to hold on to the back end of that car. So I, I think that rear diffuser is a key part of the car now. So when the driver picks up a flat tire, they're unable to get back to pit road. Um, NASCAR had to make a new rule for them that um, they're because they're much bigger than previous years. This year, when a driver blows out a tire and it rests on the rim, they get stuck on something or like you said, in the yeah. grass, um, the tow truck can push them back or they have a new tow hook that does. They used to go and like connect to the engine. This one kind of wraps around and goes through the tires. Um, yeah because they're like spoked more than like they were before with the five lug nuts and they'll pull they'll tow them back to the pit and then they can change the tires there if the car can still move other than the tire thing so that's, that's definitely not a perfect science yet they right. have to figure out something better for that and nascar is the only nascar is the only sport that changes rules on the fly if you think about it like have you ever right. like in the middle of like a football week like they play like a game on like thursday night and they're like you know what we had some problem with punting this week. So, you know what? We're going to use a different <laughs> ball on Sunday. You don't see that, but you see in NASCAR. So kudos for them to try to right the wrongs to make it. Yeah. Big, but but I think you're going to see so many more adjustments before they get it right. Oh, uh, sure. Another big thing is with these chassis. It's now a three-piece um, spec model, a rear and uh, a front and rear clip attached to the center section. So it's easier and cheaper to repair. Um, you can replace the whole front end in as little as three hours. I think it was Austin Dillon had a wreck during one of the uh, practice sessions. They were able to take the car back to their garage, um, cut the front end off, put a new one on, and they were back within five hours with travel time and fixing it wow. and ready to um, run it again. So if you can get the parts, that's going to be the issue is because with like supply chain, we keep on running into um, some of the parts, but everybody has the same chassis it's easier for and that was the thing especially you know if this gets down to xfinity and truck it's gonna make a huge difference too because when smaller teams have wrecked and damaged cars they like patch them back together with super glue bubble gum <laughs> duct tape and rubber bands and you never know what the quality of the car is going to be the next race but with this right. one it's so easy to like fix it and you're only allowed to have seven chassis per team now okay um what else do we have here what's what's our uh the what's our finishing slide yep very similar okay. to um the old one that they had we used to run two packages we ran a 750 high horsepower low down force for tracks that were um less than a mile in the 550 low down force right. um 
for the other ones. So as they were going to have a 550 and a 670, but as of January 12th is the last update I saw on this, they're going to run the 670 for all places besides super speedways because they tested right. the 550 and it was just horrible it did not go over well <laughs> so and they no longer run restrictor plates even though we still call them plate tracks they haven't run it's just um, in my, it's been padded in my head yeah right <laughs> and, and since 2019 daytona 500 what they do is they have a the basically the body of the car they put like a higher fin on the back and add more drag to it so it can't go over like 200 miles per hour they still have they have spacers in the engine but it's not like the old restrictors plate that they used to have it's more a combination of like aero ducts and splitters and um spoilers and, and things like that yeah okay well oh, like anything brakes. else to add yep, okay, yeah, brakes. Brakes. yep. <laughs> um they're using road racer brakes they're much bigger so you might not see and remember how like brakes were exploding and on fire and some of those short track ones um, yeah. this, this should make it easier to stop and help promote safe side-by-side -side racing. So you can touch the brakes and they're more responsive. So when you're like racing side to side, you can't, you won't, you're not supposed to lose control of the car as fast and drivers that are veterans that um, drove this, I think like Tony Stewart and Dale Dernhardt Jr. And Jeff Gordon went out on them. They said they were over braking. They are so sensitive that they used to brake like the way that they were always did it for years. And they said, you got to yeah. get a, a different feel for them. So, wow. Well, and, I'm looking forward to the short track to see how that works. And then finally, I think we have safety here. Um, additional roll bars in the cockpit. They move the seat closer to the center of the car. So if there's like a side impact, it's not as bad. There's new foam inserts in the front and the rear to absorb. Yeah, like so I, I the cars have their yeah. own safer barrier now and they have a new rear view camera um with the standard rear view mirror and side mirror so they have it. we're, we're all excited for more under the under the car views yeah. <laughs> not so, seeing what else is going on on the track just seeing you know random right. uh random car rear view you know number two so, so thank you, Denny Hamlin, for modeling your uh, two different cars here and Google for providing all those images with the copyrights were on them of where they came from. So if you want to review this, you know exactly what website to go to to find more information on the picture. Absolutely. Awesome stuff, Mega. Thank you for that quick little breakdown on the new car. Uh, excited for the season to continue on. Uh, please like this video. Comment below with any questions or comments you may have. You can follow me on Twitter at TKNation47. You can follow Mega at MegaRoller31. Guys, enjoy the season. It's going to be fun. These new cars are not perfect yet, but they will get them right over time, and it should be better for all of us. Okay, thank you, and enjoy your day. And if we missed anything on it, leave in the comments below. <laughs> yes. We'd love to learn educate from Educate us, yep. please. Yes, educate us. Thanks. Awesome stuff. All right, thanks, guys.